Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to demonstrate how to deploy Azure Function App with a Geo Disaster Recovery. Look at this image. I have got two Azure Function App, one in North Europe and other one in West US. Considered to be primary and secondary respectively. We are introducing Azure Front Door. There is a reason for that. As per the documentation of Microsoft, you can see here the Azure Front Door can route and round robin HTTP request between functions running in multiple regions. And it also periodically checks the health of each endpoint. So consider if in case I have got issue in one of my function app endpoint in North Europe, it automatically identifies it and then route that to a, that request to another data center which is in West US in a different region um, and it will have the business continuity. So I don't need to take any manual approach here. Just implementing the Azure front door is more than enough. To know about the Azure front door, I will leave the documentation link in the description. Please make use of it. Now I'm going to deploy the Azure function app using a bicep template and we're going to take uh, a practical look how exactly this is going to work. So whatever we see it in the image, we are going to deploy it into the system now, right? Let's see how are we going to achieve it. So I have got the project scaffolding created already. So if you take a look at this folders, I've got, okay, let me just do a quick zoom in so that it will be easy. Yes, I think it's good. So now I've got a pipeline, which is of no use at this point of time because uh, I'm going to continue this as a series and I'll show you how to do a deployment like a pro uh, using a DevOps methodology. Now I'm going to explore the templates. I've got a couple of modules created in order to deploy the function app in multiple regions. So um, if you look at the main.bicep file, for now, I don't need the terminal. Let me close it off. I've got a couple of modules. So this is a target scope is a subscription. That means I'm going to create a research group and then uh, deploy everything. So if in case you tamper any uh, resources, this is going to just go out and fix it back to anything. You delete the resource group. It's going to recreate the resource group and then deploy all the resources again with the pipeline runs or the script runs. It got a couple of parameters like resource group name, location, storage account name, app insights, app service plan name, function app name. So to create a function app name, I need to have a hosting plan. I'm not going to have a consumption plan. So I've got a premium, elastic premium, and I need to associate that to my function app. Also, I need to have an application insights and I associate that. And every function app requires a storage account. Please do not create a premium storage account. Please do choose standard because premium is not working. I'm not really sure is that continuing now. Uh, you can just give it a try. And now what happens is I'm just going to create a resource group first. And then I'm going to create a storage account in the same resource group. And then I'm going to create an application insight. And then it's going to create an app service plan that's nothing but a hosting plan with Elastic Premium. And then it's going to deploy the function app. So this is going to be deployed in two different regions. That means it creates two different resource groups, uh, one in North Europe and one in West US. And then it's going to create the resources in the respective resource groups. And you'll be having a multi-region function app. It's sort of an active, active. Both the functions will be up and running. So without wasting a time, let me get into the terminal and go to the terminal and then call my script to deploy it. I have already written a function, a small PowerShell function, which just loop through and then start the deployment. So over here, I've got a template. So I'm going to have a North Europe and a West US data center. You can just quickly change the location and it just goes and check whether it is in West US and then it change the suffix here and then the location. It's not a great magic. It's just going to call the new AZ deployment and then call the parameters. So it's going to create a resource group with this naming convention and then a storage account and then the app insight and then the app service plan and then the function app name. So that's simple. If it's going to be in a North Europe, instead of UW, it's going to be EN, North Europe and UW is for West US. So the deployment is started now. Let's see how that's happening in our subscription. Let me quickly go to my Azure subscription and open up my deployment Spain and you can see the North Europe deployment has started already and this is of no use because I was just doing a dry run before recording the session now I'm just going to 
do S and delete this too. Once the North Europe deployment is done, we're going to have another deployment with uh, hyphen West US. That's all exactly we see. Let me open up this and see what's happening. Okay, it has created all these resources and went all the way ahead to create a function app. That's really good. So let me quickly go to my subscription resource groups and see if in case I've got any um, RGB from, okay. So this is a primary region in North Europe. So if I open up the primary region, I should see a storage account, a app service plan, and also a application insight. So once the, let me duplicate this so that we can quickly navigate to the multiple blades easily. Now that I go to my subscription again, to my resource groups, and then filter for RGP, and then see what do we see here in my primary region. Now that I see my function app created successfully. That's good, but I don't see any functions underneath it. That's not a problem because we're going to have a quick demonstration after creating a front door. So now that West US provisioning is in place, that's good. So you can see it started provisioning the West US back here to my subscription and deployments. So now you can see it started doing the West US deployment. That's fantastic. So it's creating the storage account and then it just goes and create the function app, all other associated resources. There's no problem at all, but I've seen a difference here. AZ hyphen deploy, there is no hyphen in the best US. That's okay. Anyways, I'm just gonna fix this code later because I don't have a hyphen here. That's it because I'm just gonna check the North Europe and then do this. Uh, location as a North Europe it's called the main.json that's okay it's an old-fashioned code anyways that works that works how what exactly I want to do now so it has taken like 1 minute and 33 seconds to deploy in the North Europe data center and it's still running uh, in the West US that's okay let me go back to my North Europe uh, data center just give a quick refresh in the resource group so that I should see the uh, function app. Now I just go to functions. Let me create a new function here. This is running as a, as a PowerShell function. Okay, so I'll just give the code link also in my description. So you can just quickly refer the code if in case you need to get something, but I don't have the functions written, just only the function app template. I will definitely add the template for front door in the future, but not now. So now I just go to code and test. And what do I see here? I just see a, a plain template. Uh, hello. So I just say, instead of this hello, I just say waving from, let's say like waving from North Europe Okay, let me put it across this way Hey Webbing from North Europe All right, so that's really good. I'm done with my function So let me quickly test how this works Let me just go and give a get method and my query parameter. I just type in N A M E and then just type in whatever the name. All right, click on run. So I should see some response back if everything is good. It's good. I got a response. HN webbing from North, you know. That's good. All right. Now, let me go ahead and check what happened to my West US function app. That's success as well, right? Let me go to my resource group, 
filter for RGP hyphen function that's in best us open up the function and then wait for this to get activated click on create and then I just want to choose uh, HTTP trigger uh, HTTP trigger I just want to make another small tweak because I don't want to have a big authentication code in my URL test just remove that quickly I'll show you how to do that too now that I'm just gonna open up my code test okay let me check the anonymous access in function app Azure function app anonymous all right I should not misspell the word that's the only reason here wait a minute I should see it somewhere here right okay no APK required anonymous that's good so now what I see here this is for North Europe this is for West US so I'll just say waving from West US so I'll just say hey waving from West US that's good I just click on save this should be good just go back here copy this come back to measure function open up function.json instead of function auth level uh, I have no clue okay now that change it and then do the same for the North Europe Let's see if I done it correctly. This is for this West US and this is for North Europe. Save it. So this is all good. Now that I need to create a front door with appropriate front end pool, back end pool, and the routing rules. So I've got a script for that, which just goes and create the front door. So this script is available in Microsoft documentation. I'll just leave that link in the description you can make use of it so now I'm gonna create a front door with the appropriate rules this is going to be a global resource and I've got that in a different resource group let me copy this go back to my portal okay let me duplicate this as well because I have got some work here let me quickly open up and search for the resource group where we are creating the uh, front door resource that's absolutely fantastic we can just go ahead and quickly do a quick search here or I'll just go to my home and do a quick search here I've got the resource group and this resource group has nothing here because the process is not yet completed so we can we have to just sit back relax and wait till this is going to complete the uh, task because it has to create the front end pool, back end pool, and then the routing rules. And then we can quickly go ahead and test our application using this. That's really fantastic. Oh, we don't need this. What is this? I don't need this. I don't need this too. All I need is just to identify what is going to be my front-end URL so let's see how that works okay the front door is created or tomata hyphen front-end so if I open up this is going to be my URL so let me open up my all right and then I do hyphen API hyphen sorry forward slash API forward slash HTTP trigger 
let me click on the functions and see that's trigger one okay what happens if i just do this invoke web request i should see something but i'm not really sure all right all right it does something it does something let me run this again okay it says like have got some error in the page is that because it's going to be just a HTTP trigger. Let me see that. Let me run it. Okay. That didn't work. What happens if I open up this? Yeah. Okay. Then now I need to open up my function URL. And yeah. Let me hit this. Okay, you need, you see the authentication is not a change if I'm not wrong. That's the problem here. Same. Let me come back here, open up HTTP trigger, code test. So this should work this time. Hopefully. Let's see the function URL. Should not have any issues yeah now i think it should work all right http trigger one and then let me run this the http trigger function executed successfully that's good now i just want to say name equals chen and then i just run this again hn webbing from the north europe that's really good so i don't need to worry about this so now I just gonna do this in the loop all right so let's run this in the loop HN waving from the North Europe all good all good all good let me come back to my West US and then open up my HTTP trigger just to make sure the authentication is changed and I get the right URL for my function that's what I need to know now because I should not make a mistake by stopping the uh, North Europe data center and it should get impacted, right? So let me quickly copy this URL and see What is this going to have and yes, it's the same URL That's good. So now what happens? What we need to do I just go to my function app and Make sure I stop the North Europe The request which is flowing to the North Europe I'm just stopping the application so that means it will not accept any request right I just click on s so now awesome so it's still doing the request and now you can see the services are available so you can see service are available that is good let's wait for a minute or so so we should be um, successfully get the route happening forwarding to the next data center that that's to the best us even from north europe it's still yeah that's an old one okay the 403 the web app is stopped um, that's still not good because it shouldn't take this much of time to do the failover let me see what happens in the West US dev functions. Open up the HTTP trigger, code test, and then I can open up the log streaming now just to see how that works. Yay! You can see here now the request moved to the West US data center. That's fantastic. I'm really happy. Okay, so this is just partially automated because I have created the uh, front end uh, configurations using the PowerShell script and I've used bicep template to uh, deploy the function app. In my next video, I'm going to show how you can go deploy this uh, using the Azure DevOps pipeline like a pro. Thanks a lot for watching my video.